Hello and welcome to my live broadcasting. God bless you. God bless your families. Nice to have you with us. I hope everybody is doing okay. Please tell me if you can hear me. Give me a one in the text if my sound is loud and clear. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. Thank you, thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tamara, Andrew, Martin, Michelle, Hayden, my brother from Paul Talk. I hope you are the one. True Hayden, how are you, my friend? Lula. I, how, is it, how is everybody? Joe Bill, Ferrati Samo, James, Frank, Cedric, Nash Nash. I love you too, guys. Thank you for joining in. I hope you are all healthy and doing great. Guys, before we start, I want to ask you to subscribe and smash that like button like it's possessed by jinns and also don't forget to click on the notification bell when we go live you will receive notifications you know how youtube works by now you know and clicking on the notification bell is also a very important thing nowadays so like i said thank you for joining in today's topic guys about spanking the so-called muslim debaters would call themselves Muslim apologists. Before we start, guys, pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception, and doubt. Please, Lord, help us on you in all our ways. Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, the devil is scheming, and I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you. Thank you for your grace, Lord. And because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved son, we are saved. Please give me the courage and wisdom today and always to overcome lies, taqiyya, and deception. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and actions. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit to give me guidance and speak without any error today and also courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like we said, guys, on this live broadcast today, we have the opportunity to expose the lies of Muslim debaters, the so-called Muslim apologists. We are going to spank them one by one for you today. So if you like the topic, please invite your friends, uh, post the link of today's YouTube live show on social media, invite your friends. And if they are Muslims, please also inv invite them if you know them. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching today, we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat about Islam or today's mentioned topic. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. And hopefully there will be also Muslim ustaz or a sheikh or an imam uh, who will honor us with his appearance <laughs> and he will call us live on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Again, the Rob Christian without separation. So, let us start today's teaching, guys. Let us start. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Invite my friends. Share the link. Let us start. Now, there was an Abdul in the comment section under one of my YouTube videos. And he sent me a message in the comment. He said this, guys. R RC, with due respect to you, I think you're, you're the one who is blind, mute, and deaf. He's... He's basically a response, giving a response to my earlier comment. He says, Kedar was the son of Ishmael, the, and mountain Kedar, empty he means mountain Kedar, was in Arabia, not Europe. Okay, mountain Kedar does not necessarily need to be located in Mecca, but in Arabian land. Right? Okay, but Muhammad never went to Kedar, which is in nowadays in Jordan. Muhammad stayed basically around Medina and Mecca. So, you know, you're spanking yourself. And then second, in his second point, he's saying, your claim that God made a covenant with Isaac is also controversial. How is it controversial, Abdul? The prophethood must <laughs> come from the blood of Isaac. That's a fact that you Muslims have to deal with. It's on you. 
eat it, swallow it, right? So it's a subject to debate as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. If you read your Bible critically without prejudice, you'll find the truth. Yeah, I know the, the truth is in the Bible. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> and your answer to your claim, the truth shall shed, set you free. Yes, this is my claim. You will see this claim everywhere. This is my claim. The truth will set you free. I always put that uh, under my name because only the truth matters. Only the truth will set us free. Exactly, Abdul. For argument's sake, answer this question. Now he's going to give me a challenge, guys. You know, <laughs> we Christian apologists, we are scared to answer questions, right? So he's giving me this amazing challenge. How old was Ishmael and Isaac when J Abraham sent Hagar uh, and Ishmael away? Was Ishmael a baby when they both left Abraham? Abdul, you truly are a donkey. You are a certified donkey. And I'm not trying to insult the donkeys, to be honest. You know? Right? You are truly a certified donkey. If you can not answer the question, then I can only conclude that you're a big fool. He's calling me a fool and a real ignorant person. Abdul, you have no clue who you're talking to. You have no clue who you're talking to. What an amazing challenge, guys. Are we up for the challenge, guys? <laughs> Let us answer this challenge, guys. Ishmael <coughs> was born by Hagar and to Abraham, right? Genesis, if we go to Genesis 16, 15, and Hagar bare Adam a son, and Abraham called his son name, which Hagar bare. Ishmael, Abraham was 86 years old. So watch, Abraham was 86 years old, right? Abraham was 86 years old. If we go... <clears throat> to Genesis 21 5 we can read the following Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him all right and if we go to Genesis 15 16 we can read so Hagar bore Abraham a son and Abraham named his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham now here's the answer 100 minus 86 is 14 Abdul <laughs> so Ishmael was 14 years old uh oh Ishmael was 14 years old so Ishmael was 14 years when Isaac was born by Sarah now Sarah right being 100 years old Genesis as we showed you Genesis 21 5 it wasn't until the feast of Isaac weaning that Sarah asked Abraham to send Hagar and Ishmael away, Genesis 21, 9, 10, which he did the very next day, Genesis 14. Since there is no exact age known for the wearing of Isaac, Ishmael could have been around, let's say, 17 and 19, right? When Sarah asked Abraham to kick out Ishmael and his mother, right? So he is around, let's, around 17, 18, when he was sent away with his mother, when Ishmael was sent away with his mother. What kind of challenge are you challenging us? God bless you too, Pete. Welcome. I just uh, joined in, uh, Daniel. I'm not long uh, live. I just started the live show. So, you know, this Abdul has no clue who he's, who he's talking to. And look what he's saying. Was Ishmael a baby? <laughs> you stupid donkey. You are truly a stupid donkey. That was basically, you know, I had to address this. You know, guys, you know, yeah, you know. We have to deal with donkeys who call themselves Muslims who are suffering from Abdulism. What can we do, guys? Welcome uh, and God bless to the ones who just joined in. Today's topic, guys, is exposing the so-called heroes of Islam, right? So we had to address one question from a Muslim who thinks he has the courage and the knowledge to even try to debate me in text. What about debating me on the mic, live, right? We will give you the opportunity today to call me live to refute me. So, guys, in the debate between David Wood and Mimi Hijab, Mimi Hijab said, Elijah means God with us. Elijah 
means God with us. You remember that? So, you know, someone made this picture. I took this picture from uh, Google, peace be upon him, Prophet Google. And he made him look like a Hebrew because <laughs> Mimi Hijab, Muhammad Hijab, he was uh, trying to teach David Wood some Hebrew lessons, right? Do I have to teach you Hebrew too? <laughs> Remember? Elijah means God with us. <laughs> you stupid Abdul. You're a stupid Abdul, really. Now, if we go to the same Prophet Google, peace be upon him, what is the meaning of Elijah? Right? What is the meaning of Elijah? It means, my God is Jehovah. Did you catch it? Mimi Hijab, you are, you are truly no hero. You are making Islam really look stupid. Right? You, you are trying to teach David Wood some Hebrew lessons. <laughs> Elijah means God is with us, guys. <laughs> What a certified dunk. Let it go, let it go, guys. So, <clears throat> that was in the David Wood and Muhammad Hijab, Tawheed versus Trinity. Right, guys? So, let us continue. When Muhammad Hijab, guys, when Muhammad Hijab debated David Wood, he immediately went to Ghana, right? So Muhammad Hijab ran to Ghana after that embarrassing debate with David Wood when he said Elijah means God with us, right? And when he said Allah prays for Muhammad, not to Muhammad. <laughs> so Allah prays? So when Allah prays, to who does Allah pray, Mr. Mimi Hijab? Huh? Allah prays for, not to. So to who Allah prays when Allah prays for Muhammad, Mr. Mimi Hijab? You call yourself a debater? To be honest with you, if I would made, have made such disastrous claims like you did in that debate, I would have closed my YouTube channel and would have never ever uploaded a video, another video again in my life. It's a shame. You Muslims have no dignity, you have to lie. And, and the Muslims were clapping, clap, clap, clap. You know, they were not even listening, right? Imagining being, calling yourself a debater while you are making huge mistakes during the debate. And this is your hero, Muslims. This is your hero. What a shame. So when he came back from Ghana, guys, you see, he was, uh, you know, he took on uh, clothes, you know, he was talking to people from Ghana, trying to, you know, explain things about Islam and whatnot, you know. The guy, he came back to London, right? He, 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 came, <laughs> he came back to London <laughs> and he said, no, no, Allah praises Muhammad, right? He said, when he came back, he said, Allah praises Muhammad. But wait a second, Abdul, you filthy liar. If you go to chapter 1, ayah 2, it says, Alhamd, Alhamdulillah. All praise is for Allah, right? For la, God la, remember? For, for who? The God la, right? Because that's the name of the Muslim God, God la, right? That's the, the name of, of, the, of their Lord, of their moon idol, right? So all praises is for Allah only. It's not for Muhammad. So instead of trying to fix his mistake, he made it for Allah even more worse. He made it for his fake prophet more worse. Allah praises Muhammad? Well, your Quran is saying all praises only for Allah. So how did Allah actually praises Muhammad? Well, all the praises should be only for Allah. You certified donkey Abdul. That's what you are, Mr. Mimi Hijab. You are a truly a liar, you are a deceiver, and you are a certified donkey. Suffering from disease called Abdulism. Right? And, and Muslims, these are your heroes. That you are so proud about. Allah praises Muhammad. Aha! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 
<laughs> Lord have mercy. Guys, if we go back to the Bible, if we go back to the Bible, to Genesis 17, Ayahs, uh, sorry, verses 19, 20, from the King James Version, and God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, and I will and will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be he beget, and I will make him a great nation. And that prophecy was immediately fulfilled, right? That God blessed Ishmael. That prophecy was already fulfilled immediately, right? So it's over for Ishmael. So God is sending prophets. The prophethood came from the blood of Isaac. And only Isaac, because God made a contract with Isaac. With who? With him. With who is who? Him? Isaac. So all the true prophets must come from the blood of Isaac. Not Ishmael, because Ishmael was kicked out. Right? No prophet came from that moment on from Ishmael anymore. It, it came from Isaac, because he carried the blood of prophethood. Right? Do you agree with me, guys, in the text? I mean, the proof is in front of you, right? Anyone who dares to say it's not true, give me a two if you disagree. I dare you to give me a two. See, no one is giving me a two. I wonder why. I wonder why the people in the chat are not giving me a two. So the blood, the blood of the prophets must come from the blood of Isaac and Isaac only you filthy deceivers you Muslim apologists you think you have the knowledge well the proof is against you all right Tamara is joking she gave me it too Tamara I will I will I will kick you out that huh? Tamara watch out huh? nah, okay. she's just joking I love you sister dear sister Tamara good to have you on the show so and if we go continue, Muslims love to go, guys, they love to go uh, to Isaiah 42, right? They love to go to Isaiah 42 when they love to tell you about the prophecy of Muhammad, right? They love to tell you this is talking about Muhammad. But before I go there, guys, before I go there, before I go there, let me play a video to show you that these people are nothing but liars and deceivers. Let me play for you a video that I made earlier to show you how these people have no dignity, they have no shame when they make claims. And we are going to show you how we spank them one by one. So let me start the video for you guys. Muslims have become really sad and desperate lately. And as we know, desperate times need desperate measures. Muslims dropped all the verses from our Holy Bible to prove to us that Muhammad is mentioned there. They today only go to the book of Isaiah 42, chapter 42 especially chapter 42 but what they are doing is they are even rejecting what the quran says to prove to us that muhammad is mentioned in our holy bible why because if you go to chapter 7 ayah 157 it clearly says that muhammad is mentioned in the torah and the injil but we know that the book of isaiah is not part of the torah or the injil it is part of the tanakh right so muslims have no clue what they're talking about and they have to use deception and all kind of gymnastics to prove to us that muhammad is mentioned in our holy scripture so today we are going to expose all these so-called hero heroes of muslims they're heroes who try to force muhammad in our scripture they are even rejecting their own quran to prove for us that 
their so-called prophet is in our holy scripture and we are going to show you that they are actually worshiping Muhammad when they are doing that when they go to the book of Isaiah chapter 42 we're going to spank them one by one in this video so I ask you to subscribe and smash the like button so we can start this teaching this was Moses before Moses was Abraham before Abraham was Jacob now the last prophet is Muhammad no liar before Abraham there was no Jacob Jacob came much later he said before Abraham was Jacob you liar you deceiver why are you lying shame on you Mr. Shamsi this guy is called Shamsi and he's a known speaker uh, in Speaker's Corner in London he said clearly and you heard him before Abraham was Jacob that's not true you're lying and you're the deceiver shame on you let me play it again for you to hear what he said before Abraham was Jacob before Abraham was Jacob now Shamsi is going to prove to us that Muhammad is in Isaiah chapter 42 watch and try not to laugh the last prophet is Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. What I say to you, Samson, now let me go to Isaiah 42. I will do a quick way because the brother will take it long. Listen to Isaiah 42, yeah? And be open, yeah? Isaiah 42, speaking about the servant coming to glorify the Lord. Yes? Listen to this, yeah? Here it says, yes? Let, watch, let the wilderness or let the desert and its cities lift up their ways. Let the, uh, the village that kid in heaven. So speaking about specific people. So I went to Prophet Google, peace be upon him, to see where Kedar exactly is in the time of Isaiah 42. Kedar is here, and this is all called Arabia back then. And here is Medina. Muslims love to tell you that Kedar is in Medina, which is a big fat lie. They use deception, they use lies to deceive their audience. Those poor illiterate Muslims who listen to people like this fake scammer, this liar Samshi or Shushu or whatever his name is, to tell you that Kedar is in Medina. No, Kedar is not Medina. Kedar is basically in the south of Jordan, here. Here's another map. This is Kedar. So the son of Ishmael stayed here. This is all considered to be Arabia back then. And Medina is much more south, down here. And here's another map. Here's Kedar. As you see. You see? It says here Arabia. Here's Kedar and Medina is all the way down there. You liar, Samshi, Shamshi, Shushu. You're a liar. You are a deceiver. Shame on you for lying again trying to force Muhammad inside Isaiah 42. Shame on you, you have no shame, you have no dignity. Ishmael, and who? Kedar. So, the prophet speaking about, clearly speaking about Kedar. And historically speaking, Samson, there is no prophet come after Isaiah from, from the, the lineage of Kedar except Prophet Muhammad. That's why I would challenge anyone to, to prove to me, historically speaking, from the Muslim side and the non-Muslim side, where this prophecy fits no one except who? The Prophet Muhammad You see, this liar, this deceiver, as we showed you, Kedar is all the way up north and Medina is all the way down south. Was that a challenge? He challenged us. He challenged anyone to prove that this is talking about Muhammad. Then according to you, Mr. Liar and Deceiver, your prophet must come very close to a part called Qaeda, which is the south of Jordan and not from Medina, as the Islamic sources say. So according to this Liar and Deceiver, this Shushu or Shamsi or whatever his name is, according to him, his prophet does not come from Medina or Mecca, he comes from Kedar, which is all the way up north. Any Muslim who agrees with this Samshi, Shamshi, Shushu, any Muslim, please be my guest. But we know that this guy is nothing but a liar and illiterate, 
a jackass and a deceiver, lying about his prophet for his own personal agenda. As you see, these people have no shame, have no dignity. They are nothing but liars and deceivers. Shame on you, Mr. Shamsi, for lying about your prophet. Trying to force Muhammad inside Isaiah 42. So as you heard, guys, as you heard, this Abdul, right? This Abdul is forcing Muhammad in Kedar. We know Muhammad, he lived in Medina and Mecca. Kedar is way up north, right? Let us continue the video, guys. Let us continue the video. I'm also going to show you the deception of this YouTube channel called The Merciful Servant. They have more than 2.6 million subscribers and these people are nothing but liars and deceivers. And I'm going to expose their lies and deception right here, right now. Watch. I say it states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So as you see, this Abdul is clearly trying to force Muhammad in Isaiah 42, 13. He is deliberately trying to force his fake prophet in this verse. This verse does not talk about Muhammad, it is talking about the Lord will go forth as a mighty man. So he deliberately removed two words, which is the and Lord. The Lord go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail again over his enemies. You, Mr. Merciful Servant, or whoever made this video on that YouTube page, you are nothing but a liar and a deceiver and you have no shame and you have no dignity. Playing with our scripture, removing words to deceive your Muslim audience for your own personal deceptive agenda. Shame on you. You truly have no dignity. You have no shame. If we go to Isaiah 42, verse 13 i'm going to prove to you that he deliberately removed the lord go forth he removed those two first two words that's how muslims are they will always deceive to force their fake prophet in our scripture let us go to isaiah 42 verse 13 from our bible this is Isaiah 42, 13 from the King James Version. As you see, the Abdul from Merciful Servant, he deliberately placed three dots instead of the Lord. Did you catch it? The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So who is the warrior here? It's the Lord himself, not Muhammad. You filthy liars and deceivers have no shame. You have no dignity. Removing God from our scripture himself and trying to force Muhammad instead. You truly have no shame. You are truly Satan followers. You are truly satan worshipers for playing with the holy bible like it is a toy as if it is a toy in your hands shame on you for doing that so no it's not talking about muhammad it's talking about the lord himself the lord will prevail against his enemies not muhammad so thank you for showing us that you are nothing but a mushrik 
And if your Muslim audience believe in what you say, they are also mushrikeen with you. You commit shirk day and night. And we know you Muslims actually worship Muhammad. This is why you want to force Muhammad in Isaiah 42 in verse 13. Removing the Lord and placing three dots deliberately trying to force Muhammad instead. You truly have no shame, you have no dignity, and you are nothing but a mushrik. You're nothing but a mushrik. Shame on you. Isaiah it states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Throughout history, God has dealt sternly with those who are sent guidance and persist in disbelief. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By so as you heard, he's really trying to force Muhammad into this. He has really no shame. He has no dignity. So he's wanting to tell you that it's not the Lord who will prevail over his enemies. It's Muhammad. Thank you for sh Guys, as you heard, <clears throat> as you heard, we actually expose these liars, these mushrikun, right? These Muhammad worshippers, right? They are worshipping Muhammad, right? That's what they are doing. They are trying to force Muhammad in our scripture. Removing the name of God himself and putting Muhammad there exactly. You Muslims have no shame. You Muslim apologists, you truly have no dignity, you have no honor, you are nothing but Muhammad worshippers. Removing the Lord. Did you catch what he was doing, guys? And Merciful Servant, guys, is one of the biggest, maybe the biggest YouTube channel in the Islamic world. They have more than 2 million subscribers. And look how they are deceiving their audience. Imagine if I would do that. How many subscribers would I have? I mean, Christians are not stupid, right? They will immediately say, hey, you are a Christian, you are a liar. But the Muslims, they only clap, clap, clap. Yay, Allah Akbar, right? That's what they are doing when their Muslim apologists using taqiyya, lies and deception, right? They are removing, right? They are removing the name of God himself, right? You see, you saw what was happening, right? He removed the Lord and he placed Muhammad there, right? He put three dots, right? In here instead to tell you this is talking about Muhammad. Guys, Isaiah 42 is talking about the Lord himself. The Lord himself, right? Not about Muhammad. So truly, you Muslims are proving to us that you are actually Muhammadans. You only worship Muhammad. Right? And we showed you guys that Kedar, you know, the son of Ishmael, went to here, to, to the south of Jordan that nowadays, right? That's Arabia. This whole port was called Arabia in the time of Isaiah, right? But Medina is all way down there. Mecca is way down there. And here is Kedar. Here's the son of Ishmael living. This is why it's called Kedar, named after the son of Ishmael, Kedar, right? So are you telling me Muhammad lived here? You filthy liars. <laughs> filthy liars, filthy scumbags. Forcing Muhammad into Kedar. As I explained, the son of Ishmael, he lived here. He didn't live here. So, guys. So, Ishmael and his sons have nothing to do with Muhammad. Islam is not an Abrahamic faith at all, as they claim, right? You filthy scumbag liars. al Anbiya channel, if you have any dignity, you have any honor, and you have any courage, call me live on Skype. Let me open up my Skype. Let's see if this Abdul calls himself a man or a kid. I hope you are not a kid. If you truly call yourself a man, call me live on Skype. 
My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian. Call me and try to refute me, Abdul. I challenge you. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. There's someone said who lives in Texas. Right here, right now. I'm live. Now you have. Now you have the opportunity to refute me. Right? You see? They have no courage. They have no honor. They have no dignity. Right? They only come here to troll. That's what they do. Right? So, Muhammad has nothing to do with the prophethood or the blood of the prophethood that comes from the blood of Isaac, as we explained from the book of Genesis, right? And I did a Google Maps search, guys. I did a Google Maps search. As you see here, this is Jordan, right? This is Jordan, and here is Mecca. Look how far it is from one another. It's by car, guys, this is not by camel. <laughs> You know, back 1400 years ago, there was no car, so they have to do it with camels, right? So, by car, it's 1,342, right? Look how big the distance is. 1,342 kilometers. I'm not sure how much that is in miles, right? But you see how far this is from one another? So, Kedar lived here. And Muhammad lived here, right? And if we do this uh, Google Maps search to Medina, it's still too far. It's 927 kilometers with car. Imagine if you have to do this by foot or by camel, right? So how, how do you Muslims, without no shame, without no dignity, without any knowledge, you say that Muhammad comes from the blood of Ishmael, or let alone his sons, like Kedar. Kedar lived here. Kedar is here. Muhammad lived here in Medina and Mecca. Me Mecca is even more down south, right? As we showed you. 927 kilometers. You know how many days you need to do that by camel <laughs> or by foot? You see how they are lying to you guys? Take notes, people. Take notes. You see how they are lying to you? Muhammad has nothing to do with the sons of Ishmael. Muhammad does not come from Ishmael. You are liars, you are deceivers. Because Ishmael stayed in Egypt. And his sons went only to the east here. Right? They stayed here. They didn't go there. Abraham didn't go there. All the, all the way down. Look how far it is. Abraham only stayed in these parts, right? He up. Right? He went from east to west, right? He came from Ur and he went to west. He didn't go south. So, guys, Islam is not an Abrahamic faith. It has nothing to do with Abraham. It has nothing to do with Ishmael. It has nothing to do with Kedar, the son of Ishmael, right? And as we mentioned earlier, when God said he will bless Ishmael and from his blood there will come princes, his sons, that pro prophecy was immediately fulfilled. Yes, God blessed them and he, he multiplied them. He made him a huge nation. But that nation stayed here. They didn't go here. You know, but you know, Muslims, you know, when Muhammad, he was in Medina, he tried to be friends with the Jews. And the Jews were not stupid, right? They rejected him because they know this guy's a liar. You have nothing to do with Abraham or Ishmael. You're a fake prophet, right? And because they rejected him, he started to expel them one by one, right? He took Yathrib, right? He took Yathrib and he named it Medina and he kicked all the Jews out, right? He killed many of them and the rest of them he kicked out. So, in other words, Ishmael and his son Kedar did not go to Mecca or Medina. They had nothing to do with Muhammad. 
and the proof is in front of you. Right? Muhammad, the filthy fake prophet of Islam, had nothing to do with Kader, as Shamshu or Shamshi had claimed. Right, guys? They are liars. They are deceivers. If we go to the Quran, guys, chapter 61, 61, Ayah 6, it says, And when Isa, son of Maryam, said, O children of Israel, surely I am the apostle of Allah to you, verifying that which is before me of the Torah and giving the good news of an apostle. Now here, according to this ayah, Isa, the fake Jesus, is saying, you will find the name of Muhammad in the Torah. Question, question to the audience. Is the book of Isaiah, is the book of Isaiah in the Torah? Is the book of Isaiah in the Torah? No. The first five books are called the Torah. But Isaiah is not from the first five books. It is much later. Right? So Muslims, if they want to force Muhammad inside our scripture, don't ever go to Isaiah. Right? Because Isaiah is not part of the Torah. So you see how they are lying, guys? You see how the biggest Muslim YouTube channel, which is called Merciful Servant, they don't even follow their Quran, right? They don't even follow their Quran. They are calling Allah, basically, and Muhammad liars for saying that you have to look in the Torah. Why are you not looking in the Torah, in the Torah, Muslims? Why do you go to the book of Isaiah, which is not part of the Torah? That is the nail on the coffin of you Muslim debaters. You truly have no shame. You have no dignity when you go outside the Torah. And if we go to another verse, chapter 7, take notes, guys. And maybe if the admins, they can give you the link. I, I can do it too, no problem. I'll let me give you the link for this ayah. Chapter 7, ayah 157. Those who follow the Apostle Prophet, the Ummi, right? Last time we told you that Ummi means someone who is spiritually dead. It has nothing to do with someone who is actually a illiterate, right? The Ummi is someone who is spiritually dead. Muhammad was a nice mushrik little boy, right? He used to go in cave Hira to worship the moon idol called Allah, right? So the word Ummi means someone who is spiritually dead whom they find written. So according to this ayah, you will find Muhammad down with them in the Torah and the Injil. Take notes. Mo Muslims, take notes. Christians, take notes. So you have to go to the Torah or the Injil, the Gospel, to find the name of Muhammad. Right? Right? So where, where is the name of Muhammad, right? Where is the name of Muhammad? Nowhere in the Injil, nowhere in the Torah. You Muslims have truly no shame, you have no dignity when you go to Isaiah 42. Because Isaiah 42 is not part of the Torah and it's certainly not part of the Injil. Right Muslims? Al-Anbiya channel, are you laughing at your uh, Muslim uh, debaters? Are you laughing at them? Huh? Mr. Al-Anbiya channel, who is laughing in the text, are you laughing at your Shamshu, Shamshi? Or uh, Mimi Hijab, you, another liar? Are you laughing at them? You do, right? Yeah, we are laughing together with you. <laughs> now guys, guys, uh, the apostate prophet, the apostate prophet, maybe you have heard of him. He's a ex-Muslim, right? He's an ex-Muslim who was attacked by Mimi Hijab and his uh, boyfriends. And they made a six-hour video about him, you know, to refute him. And I watched a couple of uh, scenes in that long video. And I wanted to share a couple things with you. And we are going to spank them again. 
How many times do I have to spank these Muslim heroes? Right? Right? How many times do we have to do that? But, you know, we have to do that to show the Muslims who are watching that their heroes are nothing but liars and deceivers. Let me play the video, that part of the video for you. So we can have a nice time. Uh, this one, I think. Yeah, this one. Let me play the video for you guys. My fellow flat earthers, today we're going to be going through one of the most problematic, shocking, and faith shaking verses in the Quran. Well, to Ridvan at least. Ridwan says that when he read the Quran the first time, this guys, by the way, Ridwan is uh, the real name of uh, the apostate prophet, right, guys? So that's his name. So they know his real name. So they are addressing his claim. Now watch, guys. It was one of the verses that stood out to him, and it played a role in him leaving Islam. As you can see in the title of the video, this verse is the one that speaks of the sun setting into a murky spring. I'm sure that I've read this verse over a hundred times and I've never really been affected in the same way that Radvan has been. Surely, that's because... Guys, by the way, if you noticed, some people in the chat did notice it. He said, hello, fellow, fellow, flat earthers, earth, what, what did he say? Fellow, flat earthers, earth, earthers, sorry for my English, guys. English is not my first language, Arabic is. You, you heard him, right? So he actually believes that the earth is flat. Because the shiuch, even the highest shiuch in Islam, they believe that the earth is flat. Right? Flat earth, that's what they are still believing, right? The earth is flat, guys. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> let me continue. I'm not as smart as he is. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this one. Let's get to the video. Until when he reached the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of dark mud, and he found near it a people. The sun goes there for a bath after the day, I guess. Many Muslim apologists of our time try to argue that the Quran verse is misunderstood, or was just mistranslated. That's absolutely not true, but stay with me and see how they do that. The first way of making the Quran not look too embarrassing is to corrupt it and to make it correct again. If you search on Google for this Quran verse, you will likely land on Quran.com, which features the Sahih International translation of this verse. In that translation, you will see that they added something that doesn't exist. The verse suddenly says that he found it as if it was setting in a muddy spring. See how they lie to you? Ridwan is correct in saying that this is an addition to the text. However, it is not a corruption. Ridwan seems to not be aware that the inclusion of brackets is an indication that the word as if were not in the original text. Had this been an intentional corruption of the text, the brackets would not have been included in the first place. To be honest... Yes, it is just taqiyya, it is deception, Abdul. I don't know what the name of this guy is, right? Because this is a really long video. Like I said, it's more than six hours. But this Abdul, who claims to know about Islam, he did say, and you noticed, as if it's not in the, in the, in the Arabic, right? They added it to deceive the Abduls who do not know Arabic, right? And we're going to spank this Abdul. Let, him, let me play a little more. And I'm going to spank him very, very hard like his fake prophet. Let me continue. This has nothing to do with the video. I'm just going out of my way to show that Ridwan doesn't seem to have any idea of the basics. Here we come to number two of those apologetics. Many say that the translation is simply not clear and that you need to read it in a context, that the word used for finding it actually describes the situation only from Dhulkarnain's perspective, not as a general truth. So when the Quran first here says he found it setting in a muddy spring, it means that he saw it that way, not that the sun actually sets in a muddy spring. First off, as a lover of linguistics, I have to say that that's absolute garbage. Ridvan actually loves garbage, since he's a waste man. But let's see what he has to say about the linguistics. But in order to refute such apologetics, I can do three things. Look at other translations. That won't be necessary. We are in agreement that the words as if do not exist in the text. Compare the word to other verses. Good, we could do that. 
and use common sense. Oh boy, um, well, there are so many witty retorts that I could make, but it's so easy that it feels like cheating. If we want to look at the word, the word used here for finding is wajadaha, which means he found it. Wajada means he found. Now, we don't even have to go far. The same word is used again in the same verse. When it says, he found near it a people. He found here is wajada. It's the exact same word. So is this as if now? He didn't really find those people. It was only as if he found those people. Well, Ridvan, you failed to realize the term wajada isn't always used to refer to a physical reality. If you go nine verses back, this will become quite clear. No. Let me let me stop here, guys. Let me stop here. Let me stop here, right? Let me show you that these people are nothing liar liars and deceivers right if we go to the quran if we go to the quran let me go to the verses that apostate prophet is mentioning all right so this is talking about dhul qurnayn right and they ask you about dhul qurnayn right most of the islamic scholars they claim that it, this is alexander that's what they said right not my words it's their words right Say, I will recite to you an account of him. Surely we established him in the land and granted him means of access to everything. So he followed a course. So Dhul Qurnayn, right? He followed a course, a path, basically. And then this is the verse that Apostate Prophet mentioned. Now let's see if Apostate Prophet lied or is this, this Abdul, I think his name is Farid, right? The legend. Let Farid call me, Mr. Legend, who is writing stuff in the text you know text talking is text in text is cheap let this hero of yours farid who i'm about to spank let him call me you see this guy said what did he say in a text christian for rob christian rob christian is lucky that farid destroyed apostate prophet and he did not destroy destroy rob christian let this hero of yours call me i'm live come on call him you must have owned a uh, telephone, right? Everyone in 2019 has a phone, a smartphone or whatever. Call him, let your hero call me live. I'm live, come on. Let your heroes call me, let Mimi Hijab call me. Right? Blah, blah in text is cheap, right? It's cheap, we are live, call us. So, If we go to the Arabic, it says حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَامِئَةٍ Right? عَيْنٍ حَامِئَةٍ So it actually does say he found the sun sitting in a very hot spring. Mr. Apostate Prophet, he did not lie. Right? He actually found that place where the sun sets in a very hot spring, murky water, right? So where did apostate prophet lie? Now let's say, guys, for argument's sake, let's say the Allah, Allah did not mean what he meant. He Allah was maybe using some hashish, or the writer of the Quran was using hashish. Maybe he was smoking uh, shisha, right? He was stoned or high at that moment. Let us go and see what Muhammad himself says about this. If we go to the hadith, hadith number 4002 from Sunan Abi Dawood. Let me give you the link. Let's see what Muhammad will say about this. This is sahih, right Muslims? This is hadith, sahih. Sahih and Jain. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Right? So that Muslims will hear it because their Prophet always, when he went somewhere, he said, Salamu alaikum, Salamu alaikum, Salamu. Everything three, right? Everything is three for Muhammad. Right? So let us go to the Sahih hadith. Narrated Abu Dar. Read with me, guys. I was sitting 
behind the messenger of Allah. Allah is praying on Muhammad still. To who Allah is praying, we don't know. But Allah is praying, right? Who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. Now watch, right? He asked Muhammad. So the companion of Muhammad asked Muhammad, do you know, do you know, or he didn't ask Muhammad, but he, he's asking, do you know where this sets? Do you know where the sun sets? I replied. So the other Sahabi replied, Allah and Apostle know best. Who? Allah and the Apostle know best. And what did he say? He said, it sets in a spring of warm water. Did you catch it? Oh, Muhammad was asking, guys, sorry. Muhammad was asking. I, I didn't read it correctly. Allah, Allah's messenger is replying, right? He said, Muhammad said, it sits in a spring of warm water. So, did apostate prophet lie? No. Because Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, is confirming it. Right? Boiling, yes. Hamia is boiling. Boiling water. Did you catch it? So did apostate prophet lie? No, because Muhammad clearly says that the sun, right? The sun goes inside a spring of warm water. Boiling water. So where did uh, apostate prophet lie? He didn't lie. And I as an Arabic speaker, I confirm that according to Muhammad and the Quranic ayah, the sun actually sets in a warm water. Uh oh, so there we busted this Farid guy, who is a boyfriend of Mimi Hijab. You got busted, you got spanked, and you got served. The sun sets in a spring of warm water. <laughs> I mean, this is Sahih. Don't blame me. Blame all the Muhammad's. You know, blame Muhammad. He's the one speaking, not me. This is a prophet of God, guys? I mean, like I said, maybe the Quran is lying. But what about Muhammad? Right? It actually says he found, he found a son sitting, setting, fi in, aynin hamiatin. Right? This is a false translation. It's not called Black Sea. <laughs> Black Sea. <laughs> you filthy liar, Shakir. You see, you see how they are not even trying to translate it correctly, right? Ainin it means a hot spring, right? So he's found it in a muddy spring or a boiling spring. Boiling water. Muslims, why don't you leave this cult? Why are you not leaving the lies of Muhammad? Why are you considering Muhammad to be a prophet of God? How can a prophet of God talk garbage like this? This is garbage. You heard Farid, right? He said, you know, apostate prophet, he loves garbage. No, your prophet is doing poo-poo. He is doing garbage. He is... His, the words that are coming out of the mouth of your fake prophet are garbage. And the proof is in front of you. There is no one in 2019 who should believe that the sun sits in warm water. Leave this satanic cult, man. Leave this deception. Please come back home. Back home to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. He invented Islam. He created fabrications in the hadith in the quran to deceive you to get you far away from our lord and savior jesus christ and as we showed you many times over in our teaching videos muhammad created islam to attack the lord jesus christ call me refute me i mean my skype is open man Do we have any Muslim 
Do we have any Ustaz who has the courage and the knowledge? Do we have any Ustaz who is not hiding in the bushes? Where are you? Huh? We are alive. Call me Farid. Farid. This guy, right? This guy who was talking, who was trying to refute the apostate prophet. Since you claim to be a hero, since you claim to know it all, call me. I mean, you can uh, try to refute a non-Arabic speaker like the apostate prophet. I think he's a Turkish guy who lives in America, right? If I'm not mistaken. He's a Turkish guy who lives in America. An ex-Muslim. Call me, I'm an Arabic speaker. Try to refute me. I challenge you. Right here, right now. If you have no shame, if you have no dignity, then don't call me. If you have shame, you have dignity, call me. Oh, what a shame. And this is the guy, by the way, guys. This was the guy who was talking, right? I think his name is Farid or something. You know, Muslims have created this picture that apostate prophet is finished. No, no, you just got spanked, Mr. Farid. You got spanked, Muhammad Hijab got spanked, and Shamshi, Shushu, got spanked too. Right? All of you got spanked today. Donkeys. Right? Guys, I want to play a, another part of that video. Another part, right? where he is trying to address more of apostates prophets uh, claims right he's trying to refute his claims let us let's move on to the main part of Ridwan's video where he attempts to draw parallels between the prophet peace be upon him and hitler just like Hitler, Mohammed was a very troubled individual who had very controversial and megalomaniac ideas. Just like Hitler, Mohammed rose to power through normal means first, with the agreement of those around him. But not much later, he started eliminating everyone who opposed him. In Medina, where he first established his rule, True he story. vigorously looked for reasons to get rid of the local Jewish tribes. Just like Hitler, he established a system where others who don't follow his ideas either follow him, subjugate themselves to him, or are fought and subjugated by force. Just like Hitler, Mohammed banned everything that was contrary to what he brought. Just like Hitler, Muhammad's idea brought superiority to his kind, the Muslim, and inferiority to everyone else, so that they are disgraced and humbled. And just like Hitler, Muhammad sought to widen his newly found empire as much as it was possible in the 7th century. Well, that's quite a terrible list. Some of it's plain false and have been refuted in one of my previous videos. No, he did not lie, you filthy scumbag Farid. He actually... Everything that apostate prophet said is true. Muhammad was even more worse than Hitler. Because, because of Muhammad, millions and millions died because of this satanic cult that Muhammad created called Islam. Millions on top of millions. Right? So Muhammad was actually more worse than Hitler. Let me continue. Videos. To be honest, the only strong similarities is that they were leaders that were influential and they both fought Jews. Though, are their actions with the Jews comparable? The Prophet, peace be upon him, executed the Jews that betrayed him, as I've explained in my video about Bani Quraiza. That's not true. Guys, by the way, a question to the, to the audience. If you heard him, he's saying that the Jews, you have heard him, right? The Jews have betrayed Muhammad, right? Can you confirm? He said it, right? He said that the Jews betrayed Muhammad, the Banu Quraida tribe. Now, now, question to the audience. Question to the audience. If you are a Jew, if you are a Jew and Muhammad would bring a contract, right? According to the Muslims, Muhammad made a contract with the Jews of Banu Quraida. Question. If Muhammad start writing a contract with Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If you are a Jew, would you sign a contract where it says 
Allahu Rahman Rahim, how it starts? Bismillah Rahman Rahim. No Jew would sign a contract where it says Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Why? Because the Jews do not believe in Allah. So there was no treaty, there was no contract with any Jew. Right? Jews don't believe in Allah. They don't accept Muhammad as the Prophet of Allah. So there would never, never any Jew from the Bani Quraida tribe would have signed such a treaty because they will not accept Muhammad, they will not accept Allah. So they never ever signed a treaty with the, Jew, with the Muslims. So this is false. You cannot trust any Muslim who is talking about history. Shameless lies, exactly Peter. No Jew would sign a contract where, when the contract is starting with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Right? No Jew. Right? So there was no peace treaty at all. Muhammad simply wanted to con conquer the world. Right? He wanted to conquer all the world. Right? And according to Muhammad, Allah created the planet Earth for Muhammad and his Muhammadans. Right? Let me show you guys that the apostate prophet did not lie. Right? Muhammad is even more worse than, the, than, uh, the, than Hitler. Muhammad is more worse than Hitler. And here is why. Let me show you why. If we go to this hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, 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 Hadith number 29-26, Hadith number 29-26, this is not my Hadith, this is your Hadith Muslims, from the most trusted source after the Quran itself. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, Allah is praying on him, said, the hour will not be established until you fight the Jews. And the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, O oh Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, so kill him. Guys, do you understand what is happening here? Do you understand what Muhammad is saying here? All the Jews must be annihilated, they must be killed, else the hour will not be established. That means the end of times. So yes, Muhammad is more worse than Hitler because he wants all the Jews to be killed. And even the stones will talk and say, there is a Jew behind me, O Muslim. So according to Muhammad, the Muslims must kill all the Jews. Every Jew must be killed. You have to destroy, according to Muhammad, all the Muslims. So who is more worse, Hitler? or Muhammad. So where did uh, apostate prophet lie, Mr. Farid, scumbag liar, deceiver? You see how these Muslim, so-called Muslim heroes, they are nothing but liars, they are nothing but deceivers. And the proof is in front of you. Every Jew must die, else the hour will not be established. Did you catch it? Total annihilation of the Jewish people. Right? To make it even more worse, to show you that I'm not lying, guys, let me play another nice video for you. Yahwani and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Basharana Wakala La Takumusah Hatta Yukatilun al Muhatta Yukatil al Muslimun al Yahud Fayaktul al Muslimun al Yahud. ويختبئ اليهودي حتى يختبئ اليهودي خلف الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي ورائي تعال فاقتل إلا شجر الغرقد فإنه من شجرهم so This is the promise of, the, of, of Allah سبحانه وتعالى في آخر الزمان حينما ينتصر المسلمون على شرار الخلق على شياطين الإنس يقول الحجر والشجر يا مسلم يا عبد الله يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعال فاقتله إلا الغرقد 
فإنه من شجر اليهود صلى الله عليه وسلم فيختبئ اليهود خلف الحجر والشجر فيقول الحجر والشجر يا عبد الله يا مسلم هذا يهودي خلفي تعال فاقتل الذي بشرنا به المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم حين قال لن تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود وحتى يقول الحجر والشجر يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي ورائي فاقتل هكذا وعدنا سيدنا رسول الله قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون حتى يختبئ اليهود وراء الشجر والحجر فيقول الشجر والحجر يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي فتعالى فاقتله إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود فقد أنبأنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تقاتلون اليهود حتى يختبئ اليهودي وراء الحجر والشجر فيقول الحجر والشجر يا عبد الله يا مسلم هذا يهودي خلفي فتعال فاقتل أقول لرجال الأعمال والمال إن الاستثمار في أرض القدس إن بناء المؤسسات إن إعمار لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهودي وراء الحجر Guys, really? Where did the apostate prophet lied when he said that Muhammad is far more worse than Hitler? Right? Muhammad said every Jew must die, else the hour will not come. Even children, man, they are brain brainwashing the children. What kind of Satan religion is this? All my Jews must die, else the hour will not come. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And you, and you Muslim heroes, call apostate prophet a liar? You truly have no shame, you have no dignity, you have no honor. If there is a one Muslim in the chat, or who is listening and watching, if you truly care about your salvation, please come back home to Jesus Christ. Drop Islam, drop the fake prophet of Islam. Please come back home to Jesus. Because Jesus, his teaching is far more beautiful than the hate monger, the hateful guy called Muhammad who wanted the, all the Jews dead. Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless the ones who curse you. Forgive the ones who curse you or want to kill you. How beautiful is the teaching of Christ and how hateful and violent the teaching of Muhammad. And yes, Muhammad is actually far more worse than Hitler because Hitler, let's say Hitler killed 6 million Jews, but Muhammad wants to kill all the Jews. Disgusting, filthy, satanic, hate-mongering, Cold, called Islam. All the Jews must die, according to Muhammad. All the Jews, no one should stay alive. So who is more worse, Hitler or Muhammad? Huh? Who is more worse? Where did apostate prophet lie? So guys, today we, you know, exposed these filthy liars, these filthy scumbags, right? Showing you that Islam is nothing but a cult and you need to use deception as a Muslim debater to basically keep Muslims brainwashed, right? Islam is nothing but deception and brainwashing. Brainwashing children like these. Right? 
Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Sheikh who has the courage, who has the dignity to call me live? I mean, we are live. My Skype is open. Only Muslims can call us live, people. Only Muslims. The legend. If you call yourself a man, you are not a little boy, call me. Why are they hiding? Where is Mimi Hijab? Where is Shamshi? Where is Farid? Right? Where is he? This guy, this comeback liar, where is he? Where are you, Farid? Why are you hiding, Farid? Calling apostate prophet a liar. Shame on you. Where is Shamshi when you need him? Where is Mimi Hijab who said, Elijah means God with us. Huh? Allah prays for. <laughs> Allah prays for Muhammad. To who Allah prays, Mr. Mimi Hijab? When Allah prays, to who does Allah pray? Huh? Oh, you meant to say Allah praises Muhammad. Uh oh. Allah praises Muhammad. But we showed you that all praise is only for Allah. So when you Muslims love to say that Allah praises Muhammad, that means Muhammad is the God of Allah. Boom! On your faces, Muslims. So when they try to fix things, they make it even more worse. Right? They making even more worse. And by this, guys, we <clears throat> basically finish today's teaching. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, Jia Fazanath, sorry if I'm butchering your name, my friend. G J -A. Hi, Rob Christian. He's asking, Hi, Rob Christian. Why do Muslim women fight for ISIS? What will they get in Islamic heaven? They, you know what they get, Jia? They will watch their men in the Islamic brothel, right? It's a fairy tale. There's nothing called Islamic heaven. They will actually watch the porn movie of their husband. They will sit there and watch a nice porn movie, a real porn movie, an actual porn movie where their husbands are the flowering huris. Right? It's nice. It's a nice porn movie for them. And when they it's their turn, their husbands will deflower them too. Right? What a beautiful brothel prostitution place called Jinn. It's nothing but prostitution. It's nothing but an orgy. Huge orgy for the Muslim males only. The women will get nothing. They can only watch. Right? With the beautiful whores. It's nothing but a whorehouse. Exactly, Anton. Love you too, my friend, Jaya. I'm pleased that you are pleased with your with the answer that I gave you. God bless you guys. Thank you for for your support. Please don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button and also click on the notification bell to receive notification when we go live like today. I hope guys you are enjoying yourselves. I hope you are benefiting from today's teaching. We went to many sources we went to the bible right we went to the quranic ayahs we went to the hadith and we showed you that muslims lie when they go to isaiah 42. their quran doesn't tell them to go to the isaiah to the book of isaiah they the quran says go to torah and go to the injil isaiah is not part of the torah or the injil right Yes, it is part of the Old Testament, but it's not part of the first five books that are given to Moses or basically divinely inspired and written by Moses. That's not the to that's not Isaiah, right? Isaiah is after the Torah. Yes, it's part of the Old Testament, but it comes much later after the Torah. 
You see, so when they go to Isaiah, they are calling Allah and Muhammad nothing but liars. I love it. You are making my job much easier, Muslims. Your heroes are making my job much easier when you go to Isaiah because it's much easier to spank you, right? You are calling Allah and Muhammad a liar when Allah in the Quran is saying you have to go to the Torah and the Injil to find the name of Muhammad, right? And the proof is in front of you. So why do you go to Isaiah to prove your point? Why are you removing the name of God? Eh? We showed you that they are re removing the name of the Lord. They put Muhammad here. They are calling Muhammad the God of the Holy Bible. God forbid. You are truly mushrikun. You are calling Muhammad a la a, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's what you're doing. Right? And we showed you many times over. And let me put it again in your eyes, Muslims. You are commanded according to the Quran to worship Muhammad. You have to glorify Muhammad. Why? لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا That means you have to glorify Muhammad in early dawn and evening, early morning and evening, all right? In the morning and in the evening, you have to glorify Muhammad. Why? Because according to grammar rules in the Arabic, everything, every word that comes after the Rasul, in this case, the messenger, all the words are addressed or appointed to the last person, in this case, Muhammad. Right? So Muslims have actually glorified Muhammad. You are nothing but Muhammadans. This is why people like Christian Prince. This is why people like Rob Christian. This is why people like Sam Shamoun and David Wood are calling you Muhammadans. You are Muhammadans. You are not Muslims. You worship Muhammad. And the proof is in front of you. Eat it. Swallow it. Don't forget to digest it. Chew it. Deal with it. You are Muhammadans. You worship Muhammad. And the proof is in front of you. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. Eat it. Right? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage or the knowledge to call me? I mean, come on, man. We are live, finally. We are over one hour. We are one hour and 23 minutes live. And no Muslim has the courage and the knowledge to call me? What a shame. This is truly a shame. You are only left with keyboard jihadis these days. You know, they make videos. They make videos. Try to refute people like... The apostate prophet who is an ex-Muslim who is spanking Islam left and right. But they can't even debate him live. They can't de debate me live. Where are your heroes, Muslims? I am live. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype is open. Call me. Refute me. <laughs> Centurion. Kifak Habibi. Welcome, my friend. I'm convinced how I, how do I take the shahada? Shahata? <laughs> I will throw the shahata at you, if you like it. Guys, by the way, shahata, shahada, shahata. Shahata means, uh, basically, what, what is, what is shahata again, centurion? Uh, what do you call it? You know, when you go to a swimming pool, you put that thing on your foot. Slipper, yeah, the slipper, yeah. Shahata means slipper. You can take the shahata if you like. Let me throw it at you. <laughs> nah. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Guys, someone is telling me that Christian Prince is life. So, guys, let me wrap this up. I want to ask you. 
Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Thank you for watching guys. God bless you. Don't forget to download the video. All right? Because I have high respect for our friends. Someone is calling me. Okay. He is one. Okay, let me let me call you back. Let me call you back. I wanted to close my uh, YouTube live show. Pick it up. Pick up, my friend. Can you hear me? Yeah, hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. What do you want to say? Okay. So just so we're clear, this is Rob, correct? This is Rob Christian. Yes. Okay, so in Zechariah fourteen two, I will gather the. Abdul, 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 Abdul. You want to change? You want to change? You want to? You want to change topic? You know. Go, go away, go away. I don't want to change topic of today. Abdul, we're talking about Isaiah. We're talking about different topics. This Abdul wants to change, and you know, guys, I don't want to stay much longer. But this, these Muslims have no shame. They have no uh, dignity. Just go, Abdul. Just go. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you. There is no Muslim who can address today's topic. And the proof is in front of him. God bless you. See you again next time. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false. See you, Lord willing, next time.